Start by going to the OpenPath website or control.openpath.com. Enter your login credentials and hit enter or the sign in button to continue. You'll be brought to the activity dashboard for quick information about your organization's activity. On the left side of the window, you'll see all the navigation tabs. The support tab has a bunch of quick info, while the send feedback button on the bottom of the page allows you to send a message to an OpenPath support agent. On the top right, you have your profile options where you can edit your email address and other information, as well as change your password. Under the Sites tab, click on the Site Management sub-tab. This is where we can manage all the sites within your organization. To add a new site, click on the plus button here. Fill out the site name and any other information you would like. Only the site name is required. Click Save to proceed. You can edit or delete sites with these buttons here. Click the Entry State Management sub-tab. Here is where we can manage the entry states. An entry state is a set of rules that decide to allow or deny entry. The unlock state keeps the door unlocked. No entry denies all entry. Lockdown override only allows only override only cards. Convenience allows all credentials and trigger methods. On-site is convenience minus off-site trigger methods. Standard security is slightly more strict while strict security is the highest level of security. You can create your own custom entry state by clicking the plus button here. Start by entering the name and description of the entry state. You can then begin to toggle which trigger methods are permitted to trigger a door. To learn more about each of these trigger methods, you can check the yellow box on the bottom or ask your AVO Solutions sales consultant. When you are finished, click Save. You can edit or delete entry states with these buttons here. Click the Entry Schedule sub-tab. Here is where we can manage entry schedules. Click here to create a new schedule. Start by naming the schedule and click Next. You can quickly add entries to this schedule by entering them here. To add an event, click on the plus button here. We are going to create an event that unlocks the doors from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Monday to Saturday. Start by setting your start time and end time, as well as the time zone. Select which days this applies to. You can choose your start and end date here. Set the entry state you would like this to change to during this event. If you'd like this state to be only changed after an approved trigger method from a selected state, you can set that here. Click Save to save this event. Next we'll add the event that unlocks a door on Sundays from 11am to 4pm. If there's a discrepancy with overlapping events, it'll apply the highest ranked event. Click the sub-tab to return to all the schedules. You can edit or delete schedules with these buttons here. To add a holiday to an entry schedule, click on the sub-tab here. We will edit this schedule to add a holiday. Start by adding an event. Click on one-time event here to create a one-off event. Start by setting your schedule start date and time, followed by the end date and time. Set your time zone, followed by which state you would like this entry to be in during this event. We will set this to no entry for this example. Click Save to save this event. You can see this event ranked below the rest of the events. We need to drag this one-time event to the top of the priority list. 
If this is not done, the other schedules will be ranked higher and take precedence over this event. You have now created a holiday for this entry schedule. Start by clicking on the Zone Management sub-tab. We use zones to group together one or more entries to easily permit access to a user or user group, which we'll touch on later in this video. Zones are usually configured during the initial installation by AVO Solutions. If you'd like to create a new zone, click the plus button here. For this example, we will edit this zone. When in the Zone Edit screen, we can see all the zones and which zone each entry belongs to. You can drag and drop these entries to place them in a different zone. You can also see a zone description, which site it belongs to, and which users and user groups are permitted to have access to this zone. To save changes, click Save. You can edit or delete zones with these buttons here. Start by clicking on the Entry Management sub-tab. Entries are doors, turnstiles, garage doors, or anything we wish to permit or deny access to. You can search for an entry by any of these searchable fields. You can add, edit, or delete entries with these buttons. We will edit this entry for this example. Entries are typically configured by AVO Solutions during the initial installation. On this page, you'll see the entry details. Here is where you can configure the default entry state. This is the state the door will be in if there's no active event in the schedule or if it has not been assigned an entry schedule. You can quickly add an entry schedule here. There can only be one entry schedule per entry. A contact sensor is a device used to tell if an entry is open or closed. We can use that information to alert us if an entry has been propped open or forced open. Entry slash exit hardware is what controls the entry if it's locked or unlocked or open or closed. We can configure how long an entry is locked or unlocked here. An open path reader is what verifies an unsight credential. We can activate or deactivate card reading and wave to unlock trigger methods here. If wave to unlock is active, we can change how close a mobile credential needs to be and how close a wave needs to be to be detected. More advanced options are available. A request to exit is a trigger that will allow the door to unlock without a credential, such as a button or motion sensor on the restricted side of the door. For more information on these other options, Hover over the question mark or contact your AVO Solutions sales consultant. Click Save to save any changes. Click on the Users tab, then the User Schedule sub-tab. Here is where we can manage user schedules. Click here to create a new user schedule. Give the user schedule a name and click Next to proceed. Now we can proceed to create events the same way we created an event for an entry schedule earlier in this video. For this example, we will set this as 24-7 access with an entry state of convenience. A user schedule overrides an entry schedule for a particular user or user group. Click Save to save the event. The event is ordered by rank the same way an entry schedule is. Click on the sub-tab to return to view all the user schedules. You can edit or delete user schedules here. Start by clicking on the Group Management sub-tab. Here is where we can manage user groups which are used to quickly provide a user access to one or more zones. Click here to create a new user group. Start by naming this group and provide a description if desired. You can quickly manually add users to this group here. For each site, there will be a drop down button which reveals its zones. You can click on the zones you wish to, this user to have access to. If you wish to add a user schedule to override the entry schedule, you can input it here. If nothing else is selected, the user group will have access based on the entry schedule for the entries in that zone. Click Save to save your changes. You can edit or delete groups with these buttons here. Start by clicking the Role Management sub-tab. Here is where we can manage roles which determine what a user can access in the OpenPath Control Center. 
To create a new role, click on the plus button here. Start by naming the role and provide a description if you desire. You can then start selecting which read or write permissions the role possesses. To learn more about these options, hover over the question mark or ask your Avo Solutions sales consultant. Click Save to save your changes. You can edit or delete a role with these buttons here. Start by clicking on the User Management sub-tab. Here is where you can manage users. You can search by users by any of these searchable fields. Click here to create a new user. Start by entering an email address. This is the only required field to create a user. Fill in any other information you desire. If you'd like to assign a role to this user, turn on Portal Access and select a role. If you'd like to add a photo for this user, click on the Photo button and follow the prompts. Click Save to continue. Here is the user credential page where you can assign as many credentials to this user as you would like. A mobile credential goes to a user's phone. A cloud key allows them to send guest passes. A fast card or FOB is a low frequency credential. A secure card or FOB is a high frequency credential. And a Wigan is a third party credential. We'll start by programming a mobile credential. Enter the name. This does not matter. It's only to keep track of which device this is. Fill in any other information and click Save. You can click Send here, which will send an email to that user so they can set up their phone. Next, we'll set up a cloud key. Same thing, you can enter in the name. It does not matter. It's only to keep track of it. And click Save. Programming a fast card or a secure card is the same steps. Enter the card number here and click Save, or here and click Save. Next is a third party credential. Please contact your Avo Solutions sales consultant for more information as this is a little bit more complex. Click Save to save that credential or continue to access. On the access page, we can assign which entries this user has access to. You can assign a user group here to assign the predetermined group access. You can see here that the group has access to Zone 1 and Zone 2, but not Door 5. If we would like to allow this user special permission to access Door 5, click this box. If you'd like to assign a user schedule, you can do that here. If not, it will default back to that entry schedule. Select Lockdown Override Permissions with this option here. Select Remote Unlock Permissions with this option here. Click Save to save your changes. Click the sub-tab to return to view all the users. You can edit or delete users with these buttons here.